Go to Infendo.com and join our Discord and ask us a question. If Mario and Luigi were to do a podcast, it might sound something like this. Infendo Radio is on now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Infendo Radio, episode 643. Did I nail that? Did I get that right? I think I got that right. Uh, uh, I couldn't tell you the number. Um, I will get back to you on Hank. that. Say I got it right and just roll with it. We got a show for you tonight. Um, we're going to talk. Well, there was got some it. big news. I, I got it. I'm getting the thumbs up. Did I get it, guys? Look at go um i'm i'm up because there was a new trailer for my i think at this point like my favorite series of video games pokemon scarlet and violet got a new trailer tonight i'm gonna talk about that i think i'm the only one here who's seen it including the ghost of steve who is haunting the studio tonight so um i'm gonna tell everybody what was in that trailer and then we can kind of you know discuss based on my personal opinions but before all that I'd like to introduce my lovely co-host, starting with the one who gave me the wonderful thumbs up and is currently sitting in the rain of Hyrule Fields. Justin, how you doing tonight? And where can the people find you after you dry off? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Infendo Justin, where I have muted um, any tweets that talk about Obi-Wan, Kenobi, or Star Wars, because I am only one episode into the series and do not want any more spoilers than I've already gotten. Um, How many episodes are there at present? There Three. are two. Third one, I believe, is supposed to come out today. tomorrow or today. Three. Okay, so three. there are three then. I was going to say, um, you're halfway done. but no Yeah, so... So I gotta I gotta catch up on that. Uh, the only the only thing that I that I will confirm to anybody spoiler free is that there has been no deep fake characters yet. Oh, um, okay. Like like where they do like uh, like like yeah, Fast where and they, Furious or whatever. Yeah, where yeah. they okay. where they put thirty year old Mark Hamill's face on some other actor and, and see that one yeah. wasn't as bad as Tarkin to me. Tarkin, they they fe seem to have gotten it right but, by Mark. Hamill. But Tarkin was only like a minor character, whereas for yeah, some reason they felt the need to focus an entire <laughs> episode on on weird CGI Luke. Um, Fair. Anywho, um. So Twitter at Infendo Justin um, and uh, my website, the Disney Park com, where I have finally finished reviewing all nine episodes of the Star Wars Skywalker saga, as well as uh, one or two other Star Wars movies. So go check that out. Um, I have more content to come in the next week or so. So. Nice. Uh, well, Eugene, how you doing? And where can the people find you? I'm doing good. Um, thank you for asking, Lucas. The people can find me, you know, in Fender.com, things like that. Actually, lately I've been going out places uh, to use my Flipper Zero, hacking the planet. Look, see, look, I'm doing it right now. Um, uh, it's it's cool. Watch your dog um, style. <laughs> it's a... Uh, I've found that um, I have to be careful though because you can actually, well, with the firmware that I have, uh, find people's like pacemakers, and that's not good. So, um, yeah. You mean going to actual murder? That's going to earn you some <laughs> negative karma points. Yeah, definitely. Don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. Um, but if you go to Chili's, you can hack into their uh, like the, the, the phone tag system. Anyways, um, I'm doing good. Um, how you guys doing, Lucas? How are you doing? I want to hear all about that. <laughs> As Eugene pleads the fifth. God, I'm doing pretty good, guys. I don't have that much in the way of updates. I've been real lazy lately. I have not updated my YouTube channel. But if you want to check out some of my old content, you can search Lucas Peace. I'm the first one that comes up now. I beat that 10-year-old child who's also named Lucas Peace, who was ahead of me for years. I've finally taken him down. I've made it, gentlemen. I've made it in the world. Um, yeah, I've got some stuff on there. I've actually got a video series for a game called Inscription, which is a really cool game that I had suggested. I've heard about that game. Friends. 
Yeah, it's cool. You should check my video out and watch it that way rather than experiencing it for yourself. Um, <laughs> that's cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back into that. And I want to finally get this Dark Souls playthrough uploaded that I've been putting off. So maybe oh. a little bit of that tonight after the show. Yeah. Hey, uh, see, see what happens. Night's young. Um. Anyway, though, we've been we've been talking. We got a show for you tonight. Like I said, it's a big one for me and pretty much just me because there was a Pokemon trailer today. It is the first real, I would say, trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We have like the teaser. It showed a little bit of gameplay. It showed off the starters and everything. But tonight we got to see kind of what the game is actually going to look and feel like. And what it looks and feels like is Pokemon Legends Arceus with a little bit of Pokemon Sword and Shield. So I'm excited. I know Steve will be excited because we talked about this like two days ago and we were like, I hope that's what the game is. But um, there were a few big things that they showed off in the trailer. First off, the professor that you meet in this game is going to be different depending on which version of the game you get. They showed That's off cool. a town with like a pedestal and on the um, scarlet version, there's like an orange. And on the violet version, there's like a thing of grapes on the pedestal. I don't know if that's indicative of like the professor's lab, but then they cut to the two professors. In Scarlet, you get a female professor. It kind of reminds me of um, kind of what Sonya looked like from Sword and Shield, that uh, the, the orange haired kind of professor daughter. I'm going to say Sonya Blade from Mortal Kombat. And then, yeah, yeah, a little bit Sonya Blade. You never know how the, how the game's going to work out. Um, the Violet Professor is already an internet meme because you guys know like, the Giga Chad meme and what that looks like, the the, the super muscular dude with like Giga the shaved head and the, the hair and stuff. Yeah, well, anyway, he looks like that, and uh, the whole internet is simultaneously like obsessed with him. So, uh, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a thing. But he's the cooler of the two, in my opinion. I really like the way he looks. So um, I am tilting more toward Violet for a couple of reasons. That is one of them. The other version difference they showed off are the legendary Pokemon of this game, who are both kind of like bipedal dragon monsters that almost look kind of like, I want to say Chinese kind of looking. Like, they're not like, you know, your traditional, like, they, they look different. They look strange. Um, sure. They're both kind of technology-based Scarlet's is kind of like a, a gear drive kind of thing, and he's more classical. Hmm. Violet is a straight up like mechanical robo dragon with like C drives for body parts and stuff. Like <laughs> weird, weird looking thing, but Violet looks real good. So I think I have firmly shifted from Scarlet to Violet in one trailer. Um, those He's are version different trailer so. because uh, yeah, I guess it's it going to definitely uh, make my decision one way or the other. It's it's a good trailer, but the really interesting thing, in my opinion, the most interesting thing, and they could still mess this up, so bear with me here. But what it looked like from the trailer is um, there's a character that's talking to you out in the fields, in the open fields you can explore, and he says, um, "Did you know up to four players can connect?" and um, go out into the world and explore together. And then they cut to four trainers with their Pokemon following them, meeting up in the middle of a field and running off in different directions, exploring the world. What it looked like is that you can essentially play like Pokemon Legends Arceus with other players online at the same time, which cool. looks really, really fun. So I really hope that's what it is and it's not limited to like some little mini game or something because it looks really cool. And I yeah, really hope even that's like what the, it is. The raids or whatever they were called in. Um, very limiting, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there was at least that in uh, Freak. What yeah. was the, what the last game called? Um, before... uh, Sword and Shield? Thank you, Sword and Shield. Yeah, they had those. I'm happy they're going they back to color names. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what were the raids called? They weren't called raids. They were called like... Gigantamax, uh, Raid... Oh, God, what were they called? Oh, God, I can't <laughs> even remember now. Max Raid Dens or something. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I, but those were fun. Like I, I actually did yeah. a couple with you guys even, you know? Yeah. So, like, it was it was, yeah. it was was cool to do those. But And that seems like the one missing piece that Arceus was missing. So I'm glad that, you know, mm -hmm. that's coming back, actually. Yeah, I will say that those lose their luster after you've done like 230 in a row to get a shiny Ferramosa, but I agree with the sentiment. It's uh, it, it's fun if you're not insane. Um, the other thing that they showed off, which is very minor but important for Pokemon fans, are some of the new Pokemon. We got to see three new Pokemon. Um, one of them is, I believe, if I remember, is oh yeah, I remember it. One of them is a pink, and his name is a pig. 
and his name is Lechonk, which the internet is also going nuts over because, you know, chunk. internet culture. Chonk means chonky, chonky boy. So people are already joking. They hope he evolves into Lethic, which I also hope he does. Um, <laughs> there was a little, like, Pikachu cat dog thing. Like, it looks like a Kirby enemy, but it had, like, cheek pouches. So I'm thinking it might be this generation's Pikachu. They showed that off. And then my favorite is this little grass boy that's just like a bulb with flowers and a dumb little like squiggly line face with, with like white eyes. He's amazing. I love him. So a approximately impressed. what is this game going to bring the new Pokemon count to? Like the um, well, the, the new Pokemon counts already at what, like 905? So we're teetering we dangerously a close to it. We hit a thousand? We probably won't hit a thousand this generation unless it pulls like a. Um... So the last game that really did it big was um, Black and White, where it was like all new Pokemon, no old Pokemon. And they've already shown off a bunch of old Pokemon. So going with tradition, we'll probably get like 60 Pokemon this generation, if I had to guess. Sure. So I wonder if they'll make yeah. a big deal once they get to the that whatever Pokemon number a thousand is in the national. Maybe Dex like save it for a legendary or something. I can see it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's getting it's New getting three. overwhelming for sure. Yeah, that yeah. would be that would be a thing. God. But um, yeah, no, it, it's looking good. The thing that gave me a lot of optimism is like we were talking the other night, Steve and I, weird, we were talking about this right before they announced the the new trailer. And Steve was like, what do you think the new gimmick is going to be? And I was like, I kind of hope there isn't one this time, like Mega Evolution and Z moves and Gigantamax, just like do the basics and do it really well. And they haven't shown anything yet. So that doesn't mean there's not going to be a gimmick, but they don't seem to be leading with it. So maybe we won't get one this time, or maybe it won't be such a big what, deal because I don't want to just play what Pokemon, gets me you know? is that what gets me is that they introduced they introduce these gimmicks, but the gimmicks never carry over. So why is it these Pokemon can mega evolve in this region, mm -hmm. but but they Gigantamax in another one, or maybe they don't? I don't like. There's like nerdy. There's nerdy explanations. People. There's there's nerdy explanations for that, but we won't get into that because it's really just a it's a shoehorned excuse to you know to to give the game some context. Um, but but no, Mega Evolution was really cool and incredibly broken when it came out. Yeah. When Mega Evolution was a thing, you were limited to a team of <laughs> like a stable of Pokemon that included like forty Pokemon, right? Like you had to have. A Scissor, a Lucario, a Gardevoir. You had to have one of those good Pokemon on your team or it was wasted potential. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of what Gigantamax did right. Because, and, and again, this is another thing that Steve was talking about. But um, Gigantamax and Dynamax was more like just kind of a cosmetic effect where you got a little more HP and any Pokemon could do it. So it felt a little more yeah. natural, but I'm kind of ready to just ditch the gimmicks and play Pokemon, you know? Like, I don't, I don't need to I... be a giant... Pikachu or you know that kind of thing. I agree but I'm, I'm with you in that at least the mega evolutions gave you something unique to, sure. to look yeah. at you know yeah. but yeah. but I can understand why it was a lot easier to you know let's make every Pokemon get super big and look exactly mm -hmm. the same rather than mm -hmm. let's create a an additional form for you know 900 and billion yeah. they, characters they did have yeah. a few of them right that were a yeah. little bit unique but that like, was that was, was like gigantamax a... versus dynamax they had like unique oh forms yeah and... yeah yeah but yeah. but really the only difference was one of their moves turned into like a signature elemental move so like instead of charizard sure. dealing the generic fire attack he would do like a firestorm that lasted for five turns like that kind of thing so right. it still felt pretty fair pretty you know non you know Non cheesy, I guess, in the long run. But yeah, I don't know. I kind of pitched the idea of why not just make them like cosmetics? Like, you know, Mega Charizard isn't any stronger than Charizard, but he just looks different. You know, mm -hmm. if you really want to keep those models around in some form and, and have them feel, you know, like something, just okay, you can have a Mega Charizard, but he's not going to have any advantages in battle kind of thing, you know? Just, yeah. yeah. That, oh, I will say cool. too, for anybody curious, um, they showed off a trainer battle in the trailer very briefly, but trainer battles seem to be back, which is something that was missing in Arceus. So people can stop you with a little exclamation mm -hmm. point and battle you. The, le the um, battle engine looks very Arceus. I don't know if that'll translate to the simplified 
battles. I kind of hope not, because I think the meta community is going to be up in arms if a main series Pokemon game can't be played like competitively. Mm -hmm. But um, you can at least like run around the field and issue commands and stuff. So that all looks to be... It looks like it's really kind of merging the two ideas, right? Like Legends Arceus is going to be like the beta version of this game, and Sword and Shield is going to carry over some elements too. So, so far, I'm really excited, but we'll see, you know, as we continue onward how this goes. But color me hype. I was I was pleasantly surprised with what I saw today. The connectivity is, thing is huge. What is your guys's like pie in the sky thing that you want to see from this game? I mean, I it mine. sounds I mean, it sounds like like Lucas already said it. It's it's Arceus with you know sword and shield traditional Pokemon elements. Like, yeah. uh, I I've I mean, it's been decades since I really like got sucked into a Pokemon game and made any significant progress in it. But I will say that gameplay wise i still love pokemon legends uh and that's a game that i'll probably return to more frequently than any other and sword and shield is probably the most mileage i've gotten out of a traditional quote-unquote traditional uh pokemon game in a long time probably since platinum slash heart gold era so uh, i don't see myself getting getting scarlet slash violet because i'm just i have three four, three or four pokemon games on my switch already that i haven't beaten but um i have a feeling if it is what lucas is suspecting it will be i will get suckered into buying it anyway lucas is lucas is <laughs> This is, I my my I have a pie in the sky thing, yeah. and I've wanted this for a while, and it's never gonna happen. But like, I kind of want like an Animal Crossing y type thing in my Pokemon, and let me tell you what I mean by that. I want yeah. there to be all of the Pokemon that I in the games in some way or another. But the way you yeah. get like the old style Pokemon game is like you go into I don't know like a casino or something and you pick up like a Game Boy and then you start playing like the actual Game Boy game. Like maybe it's just like the Safari Zone with the Game Boy graphics. And then you That's catch like cool. those type of things. And then you would do the same thing for like, you know, Emerald that's and so Black and cool. White and stuff. That'll never happen, but that's what I, that'd be really cool. I want That it. is such a fun idea. I love that, dude. Um, I, I mean, I if we want to get really far-fetched about it, I'd love the Pokemon the MMO sky. that we'll never get. I'd rather yeah. get surfetched, but. <laughs> Damn. Thank you. Um, I have two. That out? Yes, he's a Pokemon. <laughs> um, and one of them is fun, and one of them is boring, but it's what I've been wanting for like 10 games now, and it just doesn't happen. Um, my boring one is I hope they finally do a good end game with like a Coliseum, and I can battle my Pokemon like in high level. I love Pokemon battles so much. What I don't love is playing online with other people, because people who play online aren't fun. They use <laughs> crappy teams made up of legendaries, and it sucks. I just want to play against really hard computers with a team that's really good and challenge myself. And it's all I've wanted. And as soon as I started playing Pokemon competitively, they stopped doing Battle Coliseum, Frontier, whatever. I just want one of those. Like, just make a really solid end game to keep me really busy. That's all I want. I would put sure. thousands of hours into that Pokemon. Um, my silly one that I've been talking about with Steve, and this would break the whole point of, like, shiny Pokemon and stuff, but... I want to be able to like dye your Pokemon. Like, remember Neopets? Ooh. Remember how you could like paint your Neopets yeah. different patterns and stuff? I want to have like a Pikachu with blue cheeks and a red Guard of War and an orange Mr. Mime. And like, I no, want to be able to do I'll, that. I'll like, tell like you real. How you do that. You 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 introduce. Maybe you don't let you actually get to paint it, but you, maybe stickers. You introduce stickers, and you can put I like stickers on your that. Pokemon. We'll see, so Pokemon because we don't have enough stadium. animal abuse in this tattoos. game already. Call We're it tattoos. I don't things. know. <laughs> well, Pokemon Stadium actually had a mechanic like this. When you named your Pokemon in Pokemon Stadium and you imported them in, it would change their color based on like some kind of code based sure. on the, the letters that you chose. Like, just do that even. Just have it be like random based on names and let us like opt in or out if we really want to. But I would love I would that. Like that. You know, I'd yeah, love that. That'd be cool. I really. 
I really like the elements of Pokemon that make Pokemon feel more like a pet sim with battling than just an RPG with with a decent metagame. You know, like I, I loved like um, the the Heart Gold Soul Silver stuff where you get to like walk. Oh, and walking around with your Pokemon seems to be back, so that's really cool. But like walk around with your Pokemon, and oh, it's Wednesday, I can go do a bug catching contest, and then I can do the yeah. Poke Olympics and have my Pikachu jump the hurdles, and like like that's the kind of stuff I really get into. Is they just the, need is a... the, like my Pokemon are my pets, you know. They really so. just need to release like a Pokemon mobile game that has like all of the old mini games from like all of the yeah. Pokemon or something like that, where you can do that kind of yeah. stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. You know, I'm I'm real hype. Like like the more I see of this game, the more I think I'm real. Like I I I love every Pokemon game. I don't think there's been a Pokemon game yet that I've been like this really disappointed me. You know, and I wasn't part of that Sword and Shield like hate train that a lot of people jumped on. So mm -hmm. I no doubt I'm gonna enjoy this game. But I hope the rest of the world enjoys it too because I I like things more when everyone likes them. As opposed but to like not, when but, I like but, them and everyone else is totally. But not me if they crap. like them too much. Yeah, not if they like them too much. If I hate them, everyone else has to hate them. We're aware of that. <laughs> but uh, but but no, really, like like I think there's a lot of fun to be had in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And it bums me out yeah. that a few things like like graphical fidelity and whatnot, yeah. like are are enough to you know, like I, I get Some it. The Pokemon off, aren't yeah. animated enough, but like gives a crap you know anyway that's that um the other little bit of news that we'll get into before we change the system is uh junichi masuda who you may know from the masuda method which is the method that he revealed about how um breeding a shiny pokemon or breeding a pokemon from a foreign country with a pokemon from your country whatever country that is um will result in better odds of getting a shiny pokemon he's been like a big name at pokemon for a very long time um he was up until i believe today the um uh what was it the managing director of game freak he is now going to be the chief creative fellow at the pokemon company so something of a lateral move i feel um and especially since he's going from one pokemon team to another but um kind of more of a consultation-y role from what we can tell which again i i've said this privately i think is a good thing because i think if pokemon is lacking one thing it's like real hardcore innovation and maybe having somebody else kind of take over from like a director's position at game freak will give it some of that but i like his creative direction i think that the games all like, like you know are, are fun and interesting and creative so i'm glad he's staying on in some capacity as kind of an advisor i guess but yeah i don't know that's that's news does anybody have any feelings or thoughts on that he's not exactly a household name it's not like i said miyamoto so you know yeah i i yeah i, I mean really... oh go ahead i was i was gonna say it doesn't really affect me much really because you know it, it's just pokemon as opposed to like an entire like company like nintendo pokemon but, is an entire know, can... company <laughs> um you know i can see the good and bad in this kind of like you know what happened when miyamoto did get you know the title of creative fellow um you know he had his hands in more games but less involved so like you know if he has that miyamoto effect it could be good or bad because yeah. you know <laughs> yeah but yeah for yeah, me i mean it's i guess kind of a wait and see thing for me for me i'm not i you know i like pokemon but i don't know like who i've heard of the matsuda method or whatever it's called but you know like i mm -hmm. i don't know it like you do you know so like I, it it's kind of not really a huge news for me i will say mm -hmm. though that it sounds like it's a uh promotion for this guy so good on him like well yeah. it sounds like he deserves it if he's been there for long enough yeah. you know well, and the vibe I get, I might be wrong. I don't really have any facts to back, to back this up, but I think the Pokemon company is something of a more, I want to say relaxed gig than Game Freak. Like I hear a lot about like the development over Game Freak and how it's very like, we're a small team that's expected to make a AAA product. So we have to work long hours. It's hard, it's frustrating kind of stuff. I suspect the Pokemon company is a little bit more chill because I, I think they're responsible for more of kind of the, creative aspects as opposed to the full-on like design so i i don't know i'm kind of just pulling all that out of thin air based on like my own experiences from, I, like the news and stuff but i, I like i feel like the pokemon relaxing. company is basically just 
like a management company. Like they manage the brand, yeah. but they don't, I don't like feel like they make anything. Yeah, well, it's definitely less of a, you know, but but they are like a third of the vehicle that it's a very weird series, isn't it? It's there. It's the only game that I can think of the only game series that's like cooperatively controlled by Game Freak, the Pokemon company and Nintendo. I just know that when people I just know when people criticize like the bad aspects of Pokemon, they never talk about the Pokemon company and they never talk. Well, some talk about Nintendo, but usually those people get corrected and everybody says it's not Nintendo. It's Game Freak. You know, so like, yeah, I don't know. Um, It's a it's an odd it's an odd company, I guess. If you know more about this than I do and you want to show me up on Twitter, (laughs) tweet at us at Infendo and let us know uh, exactly what it is these companies do. I'd be genuinely curious to find out. So. As much as I know about weird corporate politics and relationships, the Pokemon Company has always been kind of an opaque uh, yeah. example for me, just because, yeah. like you said, it's kind of three companies, but it's, and no one of them has significantly more control than yeah. the other, and yet yeah. the games seem to come out all together, and I don't know, it's weird. That's why it's always really weird when they come out with a game like Harmonite, like Game Freak produces Harmonite, and it's like, this is weird. <laughs> it's really or weird. Or Tumbo the Badass it. Elephant. And it comes out on yeah. Xbox? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have Tembo the Badass Elephant on Xbox, and that's a Game Freak game, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, well, um, with that Pokemoning out of the way, let's change the system a little bit, and I can talk about... Pokemon, which is a game I've been playing. I'm going to go first this time. I don't do that usually. Um, I've been playing Pokemon, uh, guys, and I owe part of that to Steve because Steve has been playing Pokemon. Um, He has been doing the Legends Arceus stuff that I was kind of talking about last week. Yeah, you know it. Um, but uh, so, so Steve's been going out and collecting a bunch of Pokemon, filling up his, his decks, you know, getting all the different forms for his living decks and all the crazy things that make Steve Steve. That's why we love him. Um, and it kind of got me into the, the whole hunting thing. So I've been doing like shiny hunting and stuff. But then all of a sudden, Steve's like, have you heard of the massively mass raids that have gone on? I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I played this game for 120 <laughs> hours. What do you mean? What is a massively massive raid so apparently after you beat the game if you talk to that random lady from the first chapter who has a snore a munchlax as a as a friend um she'll send you on this series of quests to do these things and open up you know how sometimes when you go to the map they'll say there's a pokemon in this area that's populating in massive form well this is like there's 80 Pokemon that are populating one area and you don't know what they are. So you fly around and you find a, oh, look, it's a, it's a Weedle. That's not even in the game, but it's a Weedle. And then over here is a Tauros, who also I don't think is in the game. And you just keep finding all these Pokemon and, and doing a bunch of raids back to back to back and stuff. So I did all those side missions and now I have those unlocked. So those are popping up every now and then, which is cool. But I was talking to Steve, and I was like, Steve, I really want a shiny version of uh, the Rowlet Final Evolution uh, Decidueye. Because I like the way he looks in this game, and the Hisuian shiny has, like, green feathers, so he looks like the other version and stuff. I think he's cool. So we came up with the idea of breeding one in Sword, and then transferring him over using Pokemon Home, and evolving him in Pokemon Legends Arceus, so he becomes a Hisuian. So that's what I'm working on. I'm grinding out more eggs in Pokemon Sword, and it's just as bad as I remember it being. I am at almost 600 hatches so far. Statistically, my odds were 1 in 512. So with any luck, it's right around the corner. But sometimes statistics don't work that way. So I could be looking at a long Well, holiday. exactly, because every, every egg uh-huh. is a 1 in 600 chance. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I know. So we'll see. I, I've been feeling lucky, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm already behind average. So, you know, what you going to do? But I've been doing that in my free time. Other than that, really, the only other game I've put any time into was Final Fantasy 14, which I said I was going to. I've been progressing through the story. I earned the ability to go to the other towns in that game, which is really cool. I, just, I like that game. It's just a really fun game. But it's also at the moment a very casual game now i've heard from a friend who i found out plays that it gets very like like 
monster hunter-ishly like challenging toward the end where you're doing these like huge raid battles with other players and stuff so there's a lot of content out there but the reason i'm so into the game is more just because it feels really good it's like really unique so i'm kind of slow burning it and we'll see if that continues but i did find out that um for the current moment in time um, while you are not limited by the server you're in, the servers are <clears throat> separated by segments at the moment. And in North America, there's three different, they call them data centers. So if anybody out there hears me talk about this game for a few more weeks and says, I want in on this game and I want to hook up with Lucas when I play it, let me know ahead of time so I can make sure that you join the right server so we can play. They are working on cross-play between the different data centers, but they say that's a few months out. Which sure. is cool because the game's been out for six years and I just joined. So for me, it's not much of a wait. But um, yeah, let me know if you really want to like play this game and see me in it. Because I believe you need to join the Aether data center. And there's also like Primal and Crystal in North America. And if you join the wrong one, you can't play together right now. So so hit me up. But um, yeah, no, that's, that's Final Fantasy XIV. It's a really cool online game. I like it a lot. I hope to continue playing it for years and years to come. Um, anybody else? What you been playing? What you been up to? Talk to me. Tell me all your secrets. I have been playing almost exclusively Grand Theft Auto games. So, uh -huh. um, so I, I was not in the mood for GTA five the other night. So I booted up Vice City on the switch and played that for a little while. Um, I did play i finished the force awakens in lego star wars i don't know whether i had done that um the, by the last episode but i did do that and uh i've been doing more video game system setting up and moving around uh than actual playing because i'm trying to get i've got like an office space in my upstairs that i've never really utilized it was supposed to be my office slash gaming room and it just mm -hmm. kind of became a storage room for most of the past five <laughs> years and i'm trying the laundry to... basket room <laughs> yeah, right. yep it was a laundry basket room for a while or you know boxes of stuff that doesn't have a place room <laughs> sure. uh, most of which is mine anyway um so I've been trying to clean that out. I got a new desk in there. I got a new uh, monitor mount so I can have my my big monitor and my laptop mounted up there. I've got my little vector robot in there as my little personal assistant. Um, and I've got a 47-inch 3D TV. So I've got a Switch dock in there. I've got an Xbox One in there. I've got a bunch of my older systems in there. And then I keep most of my modern systems down here so i've got an xbox one x for the big screen tv down here and my ps4 down here and my ps3 up there so i've been doing a lot of setting up and just kind of futzing with with setups and seeing what works um so that's been most of my gaming is just setting stuff up but you know i am i am playing through the story of grand theft auto 5 a lot faster than i remembered it taking before probably because i am intentionally not getting distracted by side quests and stranger missions and just mm -hmm. general exploration i want to finish the story and then go do that stuff so i have a feeling i'm going to finish this game within a within a reasonable amount of time and then just have the world as my playground um vice city i did just I can't remember which uh, mob boss or whatever it was that you get the big uh, Scarface mansion. I just finished mm -hmm. that mission, so I think that's about the halfway point in Vice City. Um, I'm still in Los Santos in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, so that's... Oh, <laughs> that's like in your head. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's funny because I ended up playing San Andreas because I had been playing Grand Theft Auto V and it made me want to play, you know, the alternate universe version of, you know, the, of the San Andreas world. And so I played a little bit of that. But San Andreas, like, Grand Theft Auto 
three and Vice City are like dozen to 20 hour games. long games, like oh, okay. roughly about 15 hours. Um, San Andreas is about as long as Grand Theft Auto 5 is. Mm. So um, that game is going to be a commitment and doing that alongside other open world games is kind of, you know, it does get busy. Sounds um, daunting. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the great thing about having them on the Switch is, you know, hey, I've got 15 minutes. Let me do a mission. You know, and, you know, I can just turn it on, do a mission, save it, and shut it off. The First of all, they've ironed out pretty much every bug and graphical glitch in the Switch versions. So, like, buy them with confidence, um, especially since they keep going on sale for, like, 40 bucks. I kind of wish I had waited, but at the same time, I've been playing them steadily since I bought it at full price. So, I guess it wasn't really a waste of money. Um but but yeah like like they they look they look fine now like they look they aren't as polished as i hoped they would be but it is running on the switch not on you know modern hardware yeah. um i wish that i could use rockstar is not utilizing the social club nearly well enough yeah. like it would be awesome if there was just a cloud save library where if i play grand theft auto 5 on my ps3 and then boot it up on my xbox one it'll pick up where i left off and if i'm playing like i could get the grand theft auto trilogy definitive editions on my xbox one and play them in you know beautiful high definition but then go over to my switch and pick up where i left out like come on like this game save transfers and save and sharing like these companies need to need to iron that out and get it working because that's really like everybody has more than one system nowadays um see but it's funny because the thing that i wanted from the gta remakes that didn't happen and it would piss a lot of people off because it's almost like a majora's mask 3d thing and i know how i felt about that but i don't have the same connection to gta i was kind of hoping that these games would be kind of built from the ground up in the gta 5 engine you know and that, that they would was, all feel that would like have been GTA. yeah feel like gta 5 like, so i don't even care like, if they didn't yeah i don't even care if it was like i mean i mean, I will admit like the games do handle a little smoother like the like the character physics are still like totally ps2 era yeah. stuff the driving physics seems to have been tweaked to be a little more comfortable but but yeah like i don't even care if the games look like the ps2 games if they played like yeah. the modern ones it would be just a marriage that would have <laughs> yeah, that would have that probably would have carried me over the fence because I've never been huge sure. on GTA, but I'll play a GTA, you know, and I'll enjoy it. And five really is the only one that I can still go back and play. Like it's it's kind of become the like the definitive version for me of like what I want these games to feel like. And the other games, they're rough to go back to for me. So like yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a, a lot of nostalgia to replaying them, yeah. especially, you know, replaying the story and revisiting all the, like, just the map. Going going from Grand Theft Auto 4, which in itself was not a huge map, but mm -hmm. going from Grand Theft Auto 4's version of New York City to Grand Theft Auto 3's version of New York City, or Liberty City, sorry, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's like two completely different locations, like, like, their version of Times Square in GTA 3 is just like this single intersection tucked away in like this way off southeastern or southwestern corner of the island, nowhere near where it is in the actual New York City. And whereas you go to it in in Grand Theft Auto 4 and it's like an exact recreation of Times Square. Um, yeah. you know, it's just so funny how far they've come. Um but but yeah like the having the the physics like at one point i got i was playing vice city and i drove like full speed into a building because i didn't feel like stopping mm -hmm. in 
Grand Theft Auto 4 and 5, you would see your character rocket through the windshield and, like, yeah. smack into the building. And I was just waiting for that to happen. I'm like, oh, wait, nope, we didn't have that technology back then. <laughs> um, <laughs> besides that, for some weird reason, this morning I got... I don't even remember which stage it was, but I, I, I want to say it might have been Bianca Hill's uh, stage music stuck in my head this morning. So that prompted me to pull out my uh, my GameCube controller adapter and and boot up Super Mario 3D All-Stars and play a little uh, Mario Sunshine this morning. And so I might end up dabbling in that a little bit more tonight because... Um, that is still a gorgeous game. Like those water effects have are still unrivaled, even on most modern games. It's a good game. It's a fun game too. I I still feel like even though it's really like unorthodox, when I go back to it, it's one of my favorite 3D Mario games because it still kind of has that like fun feeling that you get with like Mario 64, but it's not quite as like you know. Like, like galaxy feels like a trek for me i know a lot of people really like galaxy but galaxy feels like a commitment mario sunshine feels like something you play on a weekend you know and i, I like that i like that with mario sure i think of the 3d mario games mario 64 is still my favorite well it's so um, perfect <laughs> it's such a perfect sun game but sunshine and odyssey are probably neck and neck um, mm. and you know, which they'll teeter totter. So which one is my favorite, depending on my mood, because mm. Odyssey does have that bigger open exploration thing that I absolutely yeah. love about it. But sunshine does have that, you know, I'm just going to jump in and, and play a level and it's going to be something completely unique. And th the kind of thing that ended up becoming like the new super Mario brothers style where, Hey, let's do this one thing for one level and never come back to it, but it's going to be super memorable. I need to replay Odyssey because I, I remember liking it pretty well my first time through, but my opinion, I, I think I played it once more like a year later, but my opinion on it now is that it's kind of the ugly duckling odd one out of the 3D Mario games. And in some ways I don't even consider it like a 3D Mario game as much as like an offshoot in its own thing. And I'd kind of like to, to see how I feel about it years later, kind of knowing what the game is and going into it. Cause, cause I did that with Breath of the Wild a couple of times and it, it did change some perceptions for me. So mm -hmm. I'd like to go back and see if I enjoy it as much now as I did my first time through or if my my feelings kind of hold true that it's it's not just doesn't feel like Mario, you know, because I, I don't know. I, I feel very mixed about that game. My, and it was a cool uh, game. I, I liked Mario uh, Odyssey 2, I think, better than the first one. Just because I Galaxy, they kinda, you mean? Uh, I'm sorry, Galaxy 2. Yeah. Oh sorry, you're I was talking like, about they made an, I was like I was like, they made an Odyssey 2? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I'm I the same way though. I, I liked I, Galaxy 2 more me than up. Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> Uh, my favorite thing about um, sorry, I thought you were talking about Galaxy the whole time here, actually. So I'm gonna go off on a way tangent <laughs> here. Um, yeah, but um, my favorite thing about Galaxy Two was like kind of just what Justin was saying. Like they were yeah. not afraid of having just like a one off, yeah. you know? Like the, it I, was fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it Galaxy was really Two. Cool. Galaxy Two did something for me. I'll just I'll never forget. I think I've told this story on the show before. Mario Galaxy was the first and one of the only games where I was really excited for it. And I booted it up and I started playing it. And I was like, I'm not feeling anything. Like, like I, I played through the first few levels and I was like, why don't I feel like it was, it was a, like an emotionless experience. I was like, I don't feel anything positive from this. It wasn't that I hated it. It just felt very mediocre to me. And I know people love that game, but like, it didn't do anything for me. And I don't know how to explain that feeling other than I guess just personal preference. Like which one is this? Yeah. I've gotten so lost. Original Galaxy, Mario Galaxy uh, One. I'll like be, when I played I'll it, be honest, it, I the same for me. Wow, man. The the, the, yeah. the the hub world seemed so soulless to me compared to like uh you know, even Princess Peach's Delfino Castle. Plaza or, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And again, I, I 
like I will I will fight with you tooth and nail about why I feel Breath of the Wild is like a weak Zelda game. But Mario Odyssey or Galaxy, now I'm doing it. Mario Galaxy, I do not have those feelings. <laughs> I do not think it is a bad Mario game. I just personally don't enjoy it. And I don't know why I don't enjoy it. But I just don't like it as much. And and again, I am fully willing to admit it's a fantastic game. It's just not for me, you know? It's just not for me. That's I feel the same way about the Galaxy games. Like they are really great games. We're killing and, Steve right now. We're killing but, Steve. But but yeah, there's just something off about it. Yeah, like as is... as as much as like sixty four Sunshine and Odyssey are like just so completely different from what a Mario game is expected to be because it's open exploration style and not, no. you know, platforming challenges. There's just something about Galaxy that just never clicks with me quite right. I mean, it's a fantastic too. game, and if you put a controller in my hand, I will... better. 100%, yeah. yeah. It, it, I, yeah. I, I, think that, I don't think you guys are alone in that because I felt the same thing. It felt like, yeah. and even like the reward, it's like, okay, you get Luigi and then you have to do all these freaking you know, things again. And I did. Like, and I too. did because I was me a too. freaking completionist. Yeah, yeah, me too. But yeah, no, yeah. It's, almost like, it's almost like the Mario 3D games work best on a smaller scale maybe. And when you introduce these giant levels with tiny little areas that you're hopping from place to place and i don't know it just it, it is kind of how i feel about odyssey it's like odyssey was a good game but i might have liked it more if instead of like six giant worlds we got like 25 littler worlds like i don't know I gotta go back and play Odyssey again because I genuinely don't know how I feel about that game, and that's a weird I, place. To well, be remember, I I think I was the contrarian. I've gotten a lot of mileage out the, of my change the system for some reason. Yeah, Eugene, you were the one that didn't enjoy Odyssey your first time through. You you were I think you you felt it was very mediocre, right? Like you weren't you didn't hate it, I don't think, but you didn't enjoy it. You just you, yeah. you were like meh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all fantastic all right. games. You you, yeah, you tell no, me again. here. This is this is the only Mario game you can play for the rest of your life. I won't be disappointed with any of them. But if I had to pick and choose, um, yeah, the Galaxy ones would be near the bottom of the list. Galaxy one, that would be a cruel joke. That would be painful for me. But Galaxy two, I'd, I'd take that as my forever. Soundtracks game. are amazing though. Oh yeah, no. I, again, I still think the soundtrack for Galaxy Two is better than Galaxy One. Fight me, but uh, but yeah, no, it's it's a good, it's a good games, it's a good games. It's just, I don't know why it's not my cup of tea. Anyway, you know, this is what it is. How many times can we say the same thing? Uh, did you have anything else, Justin, or should we pass the baton to Eugenathan? Yeah, I was done about ten minutes ago. So excellent. Well, Go Eugene. Ahead. Tell us all about how you've been playing Galaxy 2, and uh, you know, let's, let's hear about it. Uh, I, no, I played Odyssey the week before, remember, because I did Amiibos, and then I realized that game sucks, so I oh, put it yeah. down. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, it's fun. It's cathartic, isn't it, though, <laughs> to, to disagree so vehemently with a popular opinion? You see come from you see how i feel all the time <laughs> yeah it's it's nice being right you know it's great um yeah, yeah, but, uh, that's how i feel uh, <laughs> uh steve's right too galaxy i mean you you can like your galaxy steve it's fine but um for me the game to end all games you guys already know it's elden ring i do want to talk about ring. it i do want to talk about it this week even though i say i don't want to talk about it every week and then i end up talking about it anyways um i mm. So I thought, remember I said, I was like, I only have to do this like one thing and then I can go like fight the, yeah. the final. Well, I've been holding off on doing that last mm. thing. Yeah. I found this like entire new area that I warp that, that I've never been to before. Like it, it like warped me there after I um, uh, did a quest type of thing. I got this item that I could use to go to this place and... God, this game is so big. It is so big. It right. is almost too big. But um, yeah, I'm doing this stuff now. Go ahead. So I had that very same experience playing, and I think a lot of people did because it was like the one town that was really out of the way. But in Breath of the Wild, um, what was the name of the the island town that you could visit? That oh was like on the yeah, 
um, yeah, where they take remember. away, they strip away all your stuff. Is that the one you're talking well, about? Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the island where they strip away all your stuff. There was an actual village that had like a mini game and a bunch of boats. And oh, some fishermen yeah, yeah, yeah. style. It's like stuff. on the very bottom right or something. Yeah, it starts like that. with the Laurelin Village. Laura Laurelin, yeah, it's something yeah. like that. Yeah. But I mean, um, it's not an it, it's not an island, it's it's, well, it's an, like on the shore, a, but it's a coastal town. I, I miss that too say. though. I'm with you but, there. I miss that yeah, like, I for the first like that, 10, 15 hours for sure. Yeah, I discovered that well into the game. And that and there Me was too. like a mini game, like a bowling mini game or something up in the snow. Those are like the two things that I discovered where I was like, What? That's that's I I didn't know this existed. So I, I get your you know, that that feeling. It's a good feeling, right? When you think you've yeah. seen everything there is to see in a game. And then all of a sudden something pops up and you're like, look at this, look at this neat thing they threw. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really cool. I've, I've, uh, um, I, I just don't know what to make of this game. Like I want to finish it and yeah. I don't want to finish it at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, because I want to get my life back. Like I want to be able to play like other games type of thing, but, um, yeah. I'm really enjoying it. Like, I just really am. I pretty much already cool. know what's going to happen at the end, so it's not like there's any, like, spoilers or anything. Like, the Internet's already done that for me. I already know that there's somebody in their underwear that's going to help me f fight the final, final boss if I need help because that's what the Internet does. That's um, how it works. <clears throat> yeah, there's this... Uh, I can't remember his screen name, but he has, <clears throat> I think, beaten the final boss solo... Um, a thousand times, um, he has a YouTube channel and he basically just helps other people fight the final boss and he'll be like, I'll, I think his name is like, I'll do this solo or something like that. And he just beats the final I boss for you. Hate, I would hate that. That would take so much of the well, joy out of it. Yes and no, because I, I'm to a point like this last boss that I just beat, I was to a get point right. where I had beaten, I be, got, just getting wrecked, just getting wrecked. Yeah. So I just summoned like three people to help me and I was like, cool, that mm. was easy. <laughs> you know, so sometimes you just need yeah. the help. I keep um, waiting to hear like one of these weeks when you're going to say, I did it. I beat the final boss. And it's like a splinter that I'm pulling out of my finger bit by <laughs> bit waiting. Like, it just never comes. Yeah, no, I, I'm telling you, this is going to be probably by this. I'll beat this by Christmas for sure. But like, oh, I'll good. be playing this six I'll be more months this for a good six months. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, te uh, I tell you, it took me three years to beat Dark Souls. So like, you know, man. Um, but what's the other game I've been playing? Um, honestly, just my flipper. I've been playing a lot of. Uh, Hacking things and scanning games. things, and um, uh, actually, I have some of my amiibo next to me because I've been trying to finish up scanning my amiibo connection. So here's my little guy. He's gonna he's gonna scan my little Yoshi, and then there it is. Now my Yoshi is on my is all scanned and everything. It's fun. It, I don't know. It's just I I like this thing. You can't get it's one if you cool. want it because it's sold out. Um, the the last of the Kickstarters, I think, just got it recently. So I think they're trying to like open it up for retail here soon. It's very sought after. I, uh, I, I'm i having a good time, so I'm glad I was able to get one. But that's it. That's really all I've been playing, so I guess it's kind of short for me. Nice. Well, and kind of short for us, then, because we are ready to get out of here. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. We will be back again next week with another uh, lovely, lovely podcast, lovely episode for you guys to listen to. Until then, take care, stay safe, and bye <laughs> bye Adios. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vita <Vitaze>. Zen. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's it. That was it. Yeah, we always um, we used to have the question block, and that was like a nice buffer. And now I don't know how to close out the show. Once we finish, change the system. It's just like, all right, see ya. <laughs> see you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs>